to Turf Chat interview. Um, just ah. you, can you just introduce yourself, um, where you used to work and where you're working at the moment? Hi, I'm Tom Waldock, head groundsman at Toast Estrian Sports Club. Uh, previously at the Rico Arena and Coventry, uh, Milton Keynes Dons and Peterborough United. Uh, more clubs than Tiger Woods, as they say. <laughs> you, eh? Yeah, been around. Um, yeah. That's... Yeah. So, where your base? What? What's? What? What have you got there? So at Toast Estrians, we are two, three now clay-based pitches, um, a brand new hockey pitch, fan-based. It's uh, three tennis courts, cricket pitch and we're just in development of a brand new full-size cricket pitch down the bottom it's being filled in at the minute to bring the levels up uh yeah we, we have all all sports there archery everything now coming in and we've got a sand base now well a, a full, fully draining pitch now as well to go all year round we're looking at more primary drainage putting across the whole as well the, the weather of the last two years and the climate change of the winters, clay-based pitches, we need to be moving forward with the weather now and getting some drainage in. We lost so many games last year. And this year would have been the same, to be honest. Are you looking at um, secondary drainage as well or just primaries? So the secondary drainage was, we've got that in uh, the pitch, but we have no fully irrigated system. So we, we run a roll cart, long time, you know, 24 hours to a pitch, three moves a day. And we found with the, the secondary drainage pitch, it dried out in the summer and cracked as the clay shrunk and the particles shrunk and the sand dropped down and, and it cost us 200 tonne in sand to reduce, like bring it back. Mm. Uh, which, you know, you can't, a club of our size can't be paying 200 tonne of sand a year to be doing that. So personally, looking at that, and we are looking into an irrigation system, a, a, a javelin system of some sort, but we're a couple of years away from that. But with the um, but with the drainage now, I prefer to use the sand to ameliorate into the clay, put the primaries in, so then we're at least breaking up particle size. But yeah, I don't. I'm, I'm very dubious to have another top drain pitch without a full irrigated system. Yeah, it's especially pretty. with the clay particles in there. It, it, a bit of a nightmare to it can be very dangerous. Sinks, keep sinking and... Yeah, yeah well, you, you, obviously the clay shrinks and the sand will just drop down any hole it's got. So yeah, I probably won't go... Yeah, if I was to do it again, if we do it again, yeah, we would step away from that. And we just ameliorate the 300 tonne in. Yeah, irrigation is the key. Yeah, with the it's the key if you... Yeah, that's, this yeah. is all the thing. You can put too much sand in and then not have yeah. an irrigation system to back it up. It's, that's it. To be fair, that pitch this year, I, I know about no rugby, but we have five or six people up a day training, and that pitch has been phenomenal for the whole year. It, 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 the, the fully draining, which is the top draining, but it's the Caps 22. It was shut down for three months during the hot spell because it was sunk and the, the sand on. But yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's getting their moisture levels right, isn't it? So we're learning curve from where you've been. Yeah, trying, definitely. Definitely, yeah. But I mean, if you can afford and you can irrigate well, 100% get it because you benefit massively through the, through the winter. That kind of ties into our next question a bit then. Um, what are the difference, differences between managing clay pitches as you do now compared to yeah. the sand based pitches that you used to manage before at, at your, your professional clubs? Uh, big difference is a hell of a lot really you know it's uh, sand based pitches you can work on pretty much 24/7 all year round and clay based the, the biggest change is you know the, I've not been able to get on my pitches two or three months this year and you, you sort of feel useless as you're employed full time you're walking around picking your nose as to speak <laughs> because there's nothing else to do i think mean, last year they called me the christmas elf because i was putting up decorations when it was wet but uh, it's uh, the, the difference is huge. Yeah, it, it, they are. It's um, same with the fertilizer programs. You go from feeding two weekly to six to seven weekly because it, it retains so much of that more moisture and holds on to it. Uh, the uh, you go from aerating so regular with sand-based pitches all year round to trying to minimize 
getting the aeration at the right times on clay based pitches because obviously you don't want that shrinking. You aerate, it shrinks, you've got crap everywhere, or your linear aerate. So, yeah, the differences are huge. It's been been a massive curve in trying to get round how to do things at the right time on a clay based pitch. Uh, I think really the, the, the timing is key, aeration is timing is perfect, and it's about just learning your pitches, taking plenty of samples and managing that moisture, ready to get that right sort of aeration on them to get you through the tough, tough spells. You, you say aeration, sort of the right yeah. time to get it on is, when is that? Just before the wet, the wettest part or, you know, yeah, just so I, the end of summer? I, I, I've got a groundbreaker in my shed. Uh, I like to ground as the, the soil starts to go down, starts to get down, you know, like going into the winter as the moisture gets deeper, so maybe towards the end of September, and then I'll vert it drain again within two to three weeks as well. And then, to be honest, the, the last couple of years, we've not really been able to get near them again because they've just sat wet. But um, this year we're incorporating a lot more sand to try and pull it through, and we've had a, a, a new soak away installed. I, I believe the water table's been rising and dipping. But, yeah, the air rate, air rate at the right time. And then coming out like now, I'll be looking to sort of I'll be very careful with the groundbreaker now because it's looking, trying to get a gauge of what's going forward. If you linear air right now and it dries too much, you're going to put that pitch out of action the whole summer. So it's, it's, a, it's a scare. It's just some type of daunting decision. But it's you've got to be confident that you know that you could you can do it and get away with it and retain the moisture to bring it back if need be. So yeah, we we did all ours last week uh, coming out with groundbreak and when we'll vertically drain at the end of March when we overseed and sand and that. But just just to confirm, the um, groundbreaker is linear aeration, which is yeah. creates a continuous That's line it. in the soil. Shapes the soil basically to create the air pockets. Yeah. What sort of depth does that go to, roughly? You just put new blades on it, and it goes down to 11 to 12 inches. Wow. But I, uh, I, can't, I get down to about nine at the minute. I'm still trying to... I can get the vertebrae drain down to 12 inches comfortable. Yeah. I can't. It's, it's a completely different ball game with that slitter. It seems to push you around in a tractor. So, so for, them, for them two or three months that you can't get on, um, yeah. I'm not sure you've been playing much on there this year, but how do you manage... How do you manage divots and the levels in in that period without getting machines on? I walk I walk the pitches every Monday uh, after games, training sessions, and uh, I'll always top dress the bad the scrum areas, a little bit of seed in there, no matter what time of year, token gesture really. But uh, and then drag mat with a small pound tax machine, I drag mat regular and brush regular, and then I, I try and. Obviously, this year has been a bit different, but I always try and get the slitter, the uh, not the big groundbreaker, but the other slitter through weekly to try and just keep something open, penetrating down if we can. You know, it's, it's some week, like I say, two or three weeks, you might get an opportunity for half a day. Mm. And then you, you've got to just jump on it, you know, work till seven o'clock at night with your lights on. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. That sand you're putting on during your mm. renovations and that all helps integrate it integrate with the sand and helps it easier yeah. to manage them divots, doesn't it? I guess. Oh, 100 percent Yeah, hundred percent. It's uh yeah. It's a lot easier, it's a lot there's a lot you get a lot more divots in a clay based pitch because you haven't got that structure holding together, you know, like the sand, you can just sort of kick back in and they come out smaller, but yeah, you can spend hours doing it, can't you? Absolutely hours. Thanks for that. Um on to our next question. What renovations do you have have planned um, coming up um, on your on your on your rugby pitches? So this year, completely different to last year. Uh, we went into the winter with, like everyone, we come into the spring no grass. Uh, you know, like every last year, we scarified, removed any fat that was there. There weren't a lot, we kind of pass across them. But this year is completely different. We've got hundred percent grass everywhere. Uh, so this year will be a case of getting a, uh, a vertical cutter, basically, and clear out, clear it out and thin it down. Uh, I, I won't need the seed. I will over seed, but very minimal this year. 
sort of if and when I, moisture allows and stuff. I'm not too fussed about overseeding. And then the main key this year will be the sand, get the sand worked into the profile. So I'll run about, I will cut down, I'll go down to sort of 15 mil, bring the glass down to 15 mil, which I'm in the process of bringing it down now. Uh, top top dress, see air rate, see. And uh, that, the sand is key, yeah, sand is key. You're just going to thin it out a bit because obviously there's a yes. you know, lot, lot of growth because they've not kicked it yeah. out. Then yeah. continue to get some sand in there to keep keep improving the pitch going forwards. Yeah, uh, and you know, and then then yeah. So rather than just leaving it, continue to to improve. Yeah, improve, improve. Yeah, you know the integrity of. I shall I shall thin it out once a month. I think it's, you have to. You know, it's a different situation to last year where you're trying to grow it. Now you're trying to manage and try and get base. You're in a really good situation going forward because. You'll never come out the winter again with this amount of grass, you know. So it's now managing that correctly, not overseeding it too highly and getting too much grass in there, uh, and basically ruining your good work. So just try and managing managing going forward that healthy grass and I'll, I'll vertical monthly across the pitches now. So it'd be, it'd be, we'll probably never have to do this sort of going forward again without any until the irrigation system in place. But it's a completely different year this year. So if you're grassroots at grassroots grounds when you don't have a verti cutter, is there anything they can do? They could do yeah, it's, you could reach out to set, reach out to the farmers, other local grounds, and pick up a set of tines. You know, I've seen a lot of I've seen some great things on Facebook where people have made themselves. You, you know, that, that's stuck on the back of tractors, little mowers. You just and as long as you can collect after, that's the key. Collecting that fat that you remove the so yeah you can get some anything that you you can pull a bit of grass out without doing too much damage to the surface and mm. you know will be will be key i think last year i didn't have a drag mat on site and i used a piece of aeros fencing and i put a couple of weights on it and it was perfect uh, you know looked looked awful but it did a great job yeah. so there's, there's plenty of things to be you know even that, that ripped out a lot of grass which i didn't want it to but i was dragging sand in but even that, you're going to be removing the weaker stuff. And if you can go across with your rotary mower and clean that top off, the benefits will be huge to you. And get two or three guys, yeah, get some things yeah. or something to do the rotary mowing. You know, don't yeah. where the mowers come from, just anywhere, just to suck it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, get it out. The benefits will be huge. Like you say, there's some fantastic things I see on Facebook. But that's a great idea. When you're working to limited resources, you know, it's, it's, it's some really good things on there. Well, yeah. going off from that and to, to the next question, what top tips do you have, if any, um, for, for grassroots groundsmen that are actually managing clay-based um, pitches? Uh, my, the biggest thing that we, and COVID actually quite helped with this, was we put a pitch program in place online. So we could dictate where training sessions went, what, what areas were good, what areas were bad. So I was always in control of dictating because on clay-based pitches, you'll get very wet areas and you'll get dry areas. And that, the water will go with the flow, you know. So it's managing, I think the biggest one is managing your pitches and educating your coaches. I know they all laugh at us. All of the coach, everyone at my club's a volunteer and I've come from a level where We've always managed the coaches. We've dictated where we put them to warm up, where they train. And when I sent them an all an email out, basically saying ladders, high intensity training, all that ought to be done here. I could imagine the WhatsApp groups went a bit crazy. Like, who's this jumped up little bastard sort of thing, you know? <laughs> but it's worked. And, and, it, and I've managed to use certain areas. So I've always kept them off the bad areas. Once I explain to all of the managers and the coaches, I'm not putting you on the worst area, I'm putting you on the best area so that the worst areas can recover and, and get it through to them that you're always, and as long as they can rotate. Uh, and that, that has been, um, yeah, so we put together an online Google, I think it's Google calendars, and they basically email in what they want and how many numbers they had. And then we just des we, we split all the pitches up into quarters, A, B, C, D, and we just give them the designated areas. And it, 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 the, the difference has been huge. Instead of them turning up 
and going in the same spot where the kit's nearest. <laughs> they now turn up and they, they'll pick the kit and they'll go elsewhere. Or if they drop me a message, I'll take stuff over and attract to what they want. No, it's build, you've got to build them relationships. It's give and take. And I moan it like hell at them. But then I'll also give back, what, you know, I'll do things for them, I'll set lights up. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, definitely is, is trying to educate and, and get them on side, but not being too weak that they'll take the mick out of you and do what they want anyway. Uh, that's the biggest thing I, I see in local when I go and help local clubs. And they, I say, well, you've got goal mouths here, you've got goal mouths there. I said, you could move them. I said, well, they won't. Said, well, you, someone needs to be telling them move around you know mm. but they all at first they think you're an idiot and i totally agree you know <laughs> if i was a player i'd laugh as well but then they when they realize that they've got the best pitch they've had for a while they you know they'll start to click on and people get on board well, you will alienate a few and you will row with people it's mm. uh, because they everyone know everyone can do our job yeah they? so expert. everyone knows their garden can do our job Right, yeah. well. and, uh, and another one is just be patient with your pitches. You know, clay based pitches, be very patient with them. As much as itching it is to get on there, if you get on there too early or too wet, you'll do more damage than good. So just be patient. And as soon as you think it's right, it'll be right. But don't try and jump on it to repair something that's bad. Grass will always recover. Now, you know, it's resilience. So, Avoid yeah, that, that. capping, I guess, a capping yeah. on the ceiling or yeah, anything like it's that. because but, you're trying to impress people with a pattern or a role for a for a photo. Don't just stay off of them, you know, until you think it's right. You don't be pressured into putting a role or anything on that you don't want to do. Do it when do it when the times are right. That's you keeping thing. that plant upright uh, around yeah, the back. Definitely. You know, yeah, definitely. Yeah, gets rolled in. You, you, yeah. And you, you've got a nice cap surface. There's no way exactly. rain's going to get through that, is it? You could come in and your pitch could be a bomb site on a Monday and you could be itching to drag it or do something to bring it. Someone will say, put your chain hours on, but just leave it. Keep people off it. Leave it. And then the difference, if it's a dry week, the end of the week, what you can do, instead of putting that pitch back two or three weeks, you're now ahead of the pitch for the next two weeks. So, you know, it's sort of, you don't want to go two steps back, you know, one forward. Mm -hmm. You want to just be keeping going forward. So don't be pressured into doing nothing. Just be strong and hold your will. And as like I said earlier, grass will it will recover. Yeah. We all, the other thing is we love to get on and we feel that if we can see something, we've done something. But sometimes exactly, yeah. the best thing yeah. is not to do anything. That's really yeah. hard. You know, yeah, it, we want to it, get it, out. We want, you know, especially if voluntary, you want to get out. It's part of your week. It's part of your, you know, it's, it's good yeah. for you. But, you, you know, but. Yeah, as you say, just got to hold back. Great. I found, I found it really hard coming over from being able to work every day and to then being able to sort of three days not being able to only just div it. I could have been mowing every day where I was before. So, and last year, I think I pushed my pitches a bit too far because of not the knowledge of the clay base. I should have stayed off them. And this year, you know, so it's been a different year this year. But next year, I shall stay off them. Uh, yeah, it's... Like I said, it's resilient. It'll recover. And last last question, because um, I know you do quite well with it, the, managing the committees and that. So what is your top tips for managing committees to ex ex access um, funding and support from the club? So the way I've dealt with these guys is I've always written a detailed plan. I know it's boring and it's, and it's not things, but basically making it, I give them three examples of what will happen if it don't, if you don't do it and what will go wrong. And, and then the, the explanation of what every nutrient will do in that chemical fertilizer across four pitches, etc. cetera. Um, you know, the cheaper versions will be a firework. They'll go off, they'll light up, they'll get a lovely green color. And then three or four weeks, you're back to the tinge and yellow. And they say, well, we've spent 20 quid a bag on this and you put down bags. They say, well, yeah, but that's the difference of using a good product or going for a cheaper product. So yeah, I've always detailed um, everything I've done. So that when we were buying mowers, we'd give three options and I'd, I'd, I'd just written down everything that was about and everything good that I thought. You, you've just got to basically give them so much information, they cannot say no. They will say no. You will, they will, you know, but you've covered yourself, haven't you, sort of. 
I'm sure you deal with them at a much higher level than my my guys, but yeah, it's, uh, yeah, we have, we give sort of an A, B, and C choice. So yeah, and, and then recommendation what we recommend, and then at the end of the day, they make the decision. Yeah, uh, um, if they pick the top top choice, we we're under a little bit of pressure then because we have got to keep to it. Um, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're saying <laughs> if, you, if you if you spend this and you'll get this and you'll lo you'll lose very little games and they lose mm -hmm. loads of games, you're under pressure, but. Yeah. yeah, you present the pre present the free options and and let them choose at the end of the day. Yeah, and put your recommendation. They feel like they're making the choice then as well. Yeah, I mean yeah. there are always free. There, there usually are free ways to do it. There's probably only one real way to do it properly. But yeah, you've got a bit. You got to work within their budget. Yeah, yeah. If you bring engage them into it, and mm. make, you know they feel Definitely, like it's yeah. just your your little hobby, and you know that you're just trying to spend money. That, you know, you go, you know, that they're part of the process and they, yeah. we all want the same thing at the end of the day. So, yeah. yeah. And I'm sure you, you know, if you do your top, you're confident in yourself that it will be right and you'll manage it right, you know. So, mm. yeah, that's a, it's a, it's a good one. It's, I basically tell them that much bull crap <laughs> that they cannot say no. And if they do say no, then they, I'm co you, you're covered basically, you know. And if you give them enough information, They'll, and they all sit down and they say, well, what can they come back at you with sort of thing? Mm. So you're forcing them into a corner cleverly without them knowing it because you're just trying, you're trying to put, put it onto them, like you just said about making the decision. And uh, But yeah, you've basically just hammered them with a load of info that they're probably not going to read. But if they say no, you, you're covered. Yeah. So, you know, it's we, we've been... At my place, we we have started from scratch. We bought machinery from new. Everything now, you know, which is and it's been fantastic. It's been a really good project. It don't look like we're slowing down that much, even with COVID. I think with all the grants that were in place before COVID are still there. So the site's going forward. It's um, it's been an amazing project, really. And the committee have been very good. But that will feather out as the money. You know, the money's not going to last like this forever. I think it's been like four. Five thousand on machinery last year from grants, so you know that's not going to be a yearly thing. You know, we're, we're up and running. We're solely based now. We can do it all ourselves. So yeah, it's um, yeah, top tip, fill them with shit. <laughs> well, thanks for that, Tom. Thanks for taking the time out to ask answer, answer these questions. Thank you. Really appreciate that. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, thanks again. See what a great job you guys are doing as well. Like I said, the information on Facebook. Um, brilliant. It's well, it's brilliant. Guys, like, guys like you that are really doing it for helping us, because, you know, obviously I, I can only give out a certain amount of what I know and stuff, so it's, it's all really down to the people that help me. So, yeah. And I'll tell you what, as well, to the to the groundsmen that seclude themselves, reach out. I've, I'd say I reach out to every groundsman and everyone, if, if anything up, the top clubs, they, they will always message you back. They will always be willing to help. Reach out to them. Go to the to cricket. You know, I've, I've met the people like that Gary H. Baston, and, and he was he, telling information, you know, about everything. They're so, people are so willing to help. Don't be, because they're at a big club, don't think you can't reach out. Really, re reach out to them, and you'll be, you'll be surprised. The, the community and the, the groundsmanship is, is unreal. You get so much help out there. It's probably unlike any other, many other industries. Yeah, it's yeah. It, it's it's crazy. Yeah. You know, like drop of a message on Facebook, everyone's connected. The information you can pick from some of these guys' brains is, is unbelievable. Yeah. So yeah, definitely reach out to them. Okay, Tom, thank you for that. And thank uh, you. have a good yeah. weekend. Yeah, and you, thank you. Thank you.